Hi guys, welcome back to RS Culture. So this is a drum filter that you actually might use in your shrimp farm or mud crab farm in an RS operation. So in this video, I'll be showing everybody an unboxing video of this drum filter, how to assemble it and how to run it in an actual operation. So stay tuned. Welcome back guys. For those who are new to RS Aquaculture, we actually produce weekly content with regards to shrimp farming and mud crab farming either using RAS or Bioflock. So do like and subscribe if you like our content so you get a weekly notification on our latest video. So back to this week's video. As you can see, we actually received a drum filter from one of our friends from Japan. He actually sent us one of these uh, just to try it out for our Bioflock farm. So initially, you know, as uh, the package actually came from China, uh, it doesn't really have a, a very clear instruction on how to set it up uh, but nevertheless we will see how it goes and uh, we'll try to figure it on as we go so you can see it's actually made up of this plastic uh, boxes i'm guessing this is a htp uh, material and it's those cartons that normally you can get it for to put in your fruits or etc so obviously they have actually modified this to put in the whole drum filter sieve inside it so you can see everything is actually made out of plastic which is a very important point considering the fact that we are actually going to operate this in salt water uh, electrical, I didn't really look into details of the electrical panel, but you can see it runs on a 220 supply. And uh, if you look at it, some of the bearings are using a nylon and uh, most of it is stainless steel. And you have this lever switch, uh, which I'll explain its functionality a bit on. So this is how the switch board looks like. Uh, it probably has some timers and some uh, electrical relays to trigger up. Uh, some of the backwashing when the cycle is complete and I think this is a motor that's mounted over here which is to turn the drum uh, just like any other drum filter this is where you introduce water into the filter uh, which goes into the drum and you have also one outlet uh, from the filter uh, this is actually a nozzle that is used to backwash the filter and I'll be assembling it uh, over at the PVC pipe that you see over behind and you assemble it like this. So at this point, we actually did not glue anything yet because uh, I'm still a bit unsure how everything works. So we like to you know make sure that everything is assembled as per intended operation before we glue up anything. And actually uh, connecting to this nozzle is a small pump uh, that is located on the inside. So actually you pump water from the drum filter and use it for backwash. So what we did next is to actually to assemble it on a, on a big tank, tanks about two to 300 liters um, and we want to see it in operation. So after we plug the power in, immediately it start turning the drum. And I think this is some default protocol, is which when the power is turned off, it, proceed, it does a backwash cycle first. And um, by judging from this, is this is actually our outlet of the drum filter. So you can see that water actually comes out uh, through these perforated pipes, um, which I think is intended to increase aeration. So water actually overflows down to the perforated pipe. And I've actually started to introduce water into the drum filter via the inlet. Uh, and this in this case, I'm just using some well water to test everything out. So everything at this moment looks quite good. As you can see, the, the next step here, you know, you can see generally if the water goes in in a consistent manner, usually the drum will not operate or turn because there's nothing clogging up the sieves yet. Uh, and water is able to overflow in a relative manner. I think right now we're running about 5 to 10 cubic meters per, per hour. So it's not too high flow because I'm just running it with a small pipe. So in reality, that you know, this in inlet connection, you can actually connect it to a pump and put it inside your bioflock. And this is for the outlet where the waste go. And actually they provided some of this, uh, what we call filter sheet that we will actually be using to sort of filter out this uh, prawn waste. So actually now we are using shrimp feed that looks like that. And I'll be artificially introducing them into the inlet. Um, of course, we're not putting in any tank right now. So I'll just be manually putting in the feed inside and uh, by adding more water to flush it all into the screen. And I'll show you some of the, the impact it does later. So actually we just put in uh, quite a lot of shrimp feed uh, for multiple rounds. So first thing forward, you realize the shrimp feed will not actually bypass. It will stay inside the screen and you basically the screen acts as a filtration system and only clean water is able to pass through, uh, which is what you see over here at the sides and it actually goes out through the perforated pipe. 
So that is actually quite logical looking at the construction of the screen. And of course, you can change the screen size, uh, I believe so. Um, and what happens over time is you have a lot of waste, right? And you have a water level that's increasing inside the screen because of uh, fouling. It actually raises up the level switch and then it triggers a nozzle, right? So this happens because we have not glued it. So after gluing it, you can see that once it's being triggered, the water level, uh, it will start turning the drum and backwashing a lot of their feet uh, out against the way to the screen into this center channel that will be actually considered your waistline. So as you can see that you know by triggering the water flow, you know it turns the drum and wash it in a continuous cycle. And if in the event that um, your water the screen gets too clogged out and you don't it doesn't activate in time, it will just overflow from the front. Right, so that's a unique concept of this drum filter. So you do not have a what we call a low flow situation. You no, know, it's better to let the solid overrun as compared to having a clock filter that cannot operate uh, at zero capacity at all. But if everything works together, it's able to remove the waste as you see it from the screen. And uh, and this is from the top front view, so you can see that the water despite removing lots of solids inside the screen the water on the outside of the screen is still very rarely clean you don't get any of the stream feed that passes through which actually shows the success of this uh, drum filter and uh, what you can see over here is by washing it, it actually flows through the middle pipe which you can't really see over here but i'll show you the collection cup in a bit um, so what it does it uses a pump and use a backwash to wash off any solids that's sticking onto the screen because of um, the filtration process and then what it does is it gets collected in the front over here. So here we actually use a filter sock um, that is given by the manufacturer. You can see all of the feed that's accumulating at the bottom. So sorry for the zooming in and out video over here because uh, this is new Samsung update uh, that shows a lot of tracking, uh, which is very weird. Uh, so you can see a lot of waste are actually being collect collected here. So which also indicate in actual reality, you probably have to also attach a filter socks to the outlet right to ensure that you do not have too much uh, water that is being trapped in the waste so in general that's how it uh, works uh, this whole drum filter i think given the price uh, we are actually quite happy with the performance and none of the parts that are actually used here are actually steel or mild steel of any kind because we know that from experience everything will rust in a salt water environment everything is good either using um, stainless steel or using nylon right so from the unboxing you know it's actually a very compact unit and it's very light very easy to install anybody can install it and I th I'm, I'm excited to try it out on my biofloc farm Right, where we have a lot of shrimp feed so the idea is that the drum filter will help us to remove a lot of this waste as you can see shrimps actually poop and have a lot of leftover feed uh, that we want to remove to prevent ammonia build up in the system so we'll try that out in our extra tanks and i'll update everyone soon in the meantime we hope you guys enjoy and learn something about shrimp farming and market farming today using rs systems so stay tuned and hope to see you guys back again at rs aquaculture